Hey there, we're gonna take a look at a fairly newly released game that has made it through early access, I believe, and into the light, known as Full Mojo Rampage today. Full Mojo Rampage is another of the expanding genre of roguelite style games, of which most would consider The Binding of Isaac to be the sort of flagship uh, genre defining game. And uh, this is something that, like I said, went through... I don't remember if it was Greenlight or Early... I believe it was Early Access. Almost positive, in fact, is what this went through. And it's really cool. And I'm happy to say that, you know, it's released now. It's version 1.0.118. Which is, unfortunately, something we're not seeing a lot of Early Access games do right now. <laughs> this one was not abandoned. So let's just get into it, I guess. Uh, the way the game works is based on a quest system, for the most part, where you choose a particular set of levels that each have various difficulties. Uh, you'll start... The first time you play a, a quest will be on normal difficulty, and then, of course, you can go up by beating the one before it. So there's hardcore, annoying, definitely not easy, what the hell is this, and this is voodoo, which progressively get more ridiculous. And we're going to go into this quest right now. So, you start by selecting your adorable little voodoo priest. I am, well, I guess you don't select a priest per se, you select a mask. There are lots of masks. Lots and lots of masks. Unlocking them can be done in various ways. I kind of want that, but I got this one from an event and I quite like it. These don't do anything for you, they just uh, make you look awesome. Then, the main feature here is you select a Voodoo Loa. So if you haven't guessed already, this game is very heavily steeped in Voodoo culture. Uh, it, it's themed, you know, just through and through with this Voodoo theme. And uh, Voodoo the Loa are essentially, you know, like, gods, I guess you would say. And you choose one of these and uh, they give you a passive and two abilities, two spells. There are eight of them total. I am quite a fan of a lot of these guys. I'm gonna go with this one for right now. I hear you, <laughs> that's, the, that's my cat. Now, you also have these pins. You'll start with none of them. And uh, eventually you'll start unlocking them through playing and they each give you small bonuses that can be scaled up by paying with gold. Like, uh, this one will decrease your school down school downs. What? My cat's got me all confused. Staring at me down there. <laughs> anyway, it will reduce your spell cooldowns. Obviously, all your spells here are based on cooldowns. There's no mana. And you can pay gold a exponentially increasing amount to upgrade its effect. And as you level up, as you can see here, which, you know, will be done at the end of your run. So this is one of those roguelites where not everything is decided by the run. Uh, you have a sort of persistent character that is leveled up and has unlocked throughout the experience. And uh, right now, at level 9, I can equip four pins. So these are the ones I've got. Extra health, extra attack rate, as well as extra spell damage and basically armor. Because you take a lot of damage in this game very quickly. These are my stats. And uh, uh, early on, you also unlock the ability to use these blessings. You can, as far as I know, get as many of these, yeah, as you want. And each of these will cost a good amount of gold as well as metals, which are rare, and they're what you use to unlock new Loa and new masks. You can also spend them on this, so this gives you something sort of infinite to spend them on, even after you have everything else unlocked, which will make your particular run-through hopefully a bit more successful. I'm actually going to get this one, Blessing of the Heart, to give myself 900 health. So here we go. You're going to jump into it, and this is what the, the uh, map screen looks like. It's actually a game that's level-based. Now, different adventures have different map screens, and this third quest has this sort of radial theme, which is interesting, because usually there's a certain linear progression with some offshoots. This one is different. You can actually go straight to the final boss after the first level if you want, but he will be just absurdly difficult. So, first level, here we go, is a graveyard. A cemetery, excuse me. And I have to find a shrine of a particular Loa, Dabala, who is a snake. Dambala. D Dambala or Dambala? Hmm. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, to be honest. Anyway, 
Here we are in the cemetery. Now, as you may guess, the levels are randomly generated, as well as the loot you will find within them. And, uh, ow. See, as you can see already, that did almost 200 damage to me, and that was one hit. But the levels are put together randomly, as well as actually the theme being random. Uh, the cemetery is a level you'll see often, but it won't always look the same. I've seen this tile set that has this very red, foggy aesthetic. I've seen one with more of a green, abandoned, uh, more foresty than like this dead forest kind of aesthetic. And all of the levels in the game seem to have that going for them. They're almost like biomes, but there are different versions of each. So those guys are suicide bombers. There's quite the uh, good enemy variety here. And I used the spell there to make myself a bit faster so they didn't blow me up. Now you have this as your basic attack, a little wand. It's pretty basic, it's not that strong unless you buff it horrendously eventually, but it does the job. You can find other wands throughout the levels that will have all kinds of various effects, as well as some extra stats on them oftentimes, but they have a sort of durability bar, as it were. And uh, once that runs out, you know, the magic in them is gone and you can't use them anymore. So you want to use them in a limited degree, you'll always eventually go back to this. Alright, ow. And as you would expect, there are enemies that are a different color shade who are elites or champion enemies that can drop better loot and are stronger and all sorts of various things. Now, another interesting aspect of this ow is that I'm horrendously dying, is that every level has a bunch of secrets. Now this, this little headstone here with the uh, glowing blue script on it is a secret. Now, so I did that and I got an arcane wisdom relic, which will increase the number of equipment slots that I have. So you have inventory and equipment. The items in this game are called mojos. And there are usable items, there are items that have infinite uses, there are items that only have a single use, like consumables, there are also just passive effects that you equip in these slots that are relics, like equipment essentially, of all sorts of uh, uses. There are, uh, in fact, there's a mojo right there. Just gotta kill a bunch of stuff to get to it. This is the head of the king, sadly not Joffrey's head, har har. So, with this equipped in one of these slots, I'll heal 1% of my maximum health every time I kill an enemy, which is actually not the worst thing ever. Because enemies can come in pretty high numbers in this. So, if we want to do some comparisons to other games in this genre, I feel it's, you know, fairly apt to do so because there are... Boom! Increasing amounts of them. What offerings are there mainly. So we've got things like, of course, the Binding of Isaac, Tower of Guns, and Risk of Rain are the ones I'm going to use for a comparison right now because those are the ones I have the most experience with. Binding of Isaac is considered to be... Let me get a drink of water here. I'm really thirsty. Uh, it's considered to be a very well-balanced uh, entry into the genre because it was not necessarily what created it, but what defined it. So the various aspects of what you would call a roguelite are in that game. So, Binding of Isaac tends to have a focus on stacking uh, various... Let me use one of these, actually. Potion. Various items and passive effects in order to achieve a very good run-through. And, uh... Often, it has a very large number of usable items, of which you can only have one equipped at any given time. That's how that game works. Then we go to something like Tower of Guns, which is focused on a, a more of a shooter aspect, like a first-person arena shooter with movement and the actual selection of the gun that you choose being a focus. Uh, passive stacking and things like that doesn't really happen in that game. Uh, there just isn't really room for it. You, you can only have one gun mod, for example. That's not what they're focusing on with that. Risk of Rain has a much more combat-oriented uh, style to it, uh, because you have lots of characters, each with four different abilities and is also very much into that passive stacking, meaning you're wanting to get all sorts of items that will end up giving your character very powerful, uh, you know, attacks and uh, very high survivability. This game is sort of in between. This game, as you can see, there's a lot of different kinds of mojos. This game goes for variety. It has a large number of weapons to choose from, uh, gods to choose from, or Loa, and levels as well as ways to approach those levels meaning you know you can there's a wand right there speaking of there are you know you can choose on that map where to go next and 
there are lots of passive as well as usable items. So it has a, a very heavy focus on items, but not of any one sort like the others. And also a very high focus on the idea that you can explore more at a risk. Now, Risk of Rain had this because of its stacking difficulty and sort of infinitely spawning enemies, and Binding of Isaac had this because of its uh, sort of Zelda-like level design. And it's the idea that, uh, basically, you can explore more than you need to to finish the level to get better stuff at the risk of getting killed or getting damaged more, having to use more stuff. So, I could uh, complete this level and not go into any of the side areas, like that door that I found earlier that led me to a chest, being quicker and expending fewer resources, but I also have less of a possibility of finding cool stuff. I can go to different levels on that map screen than the one I necessarily need to in hopes of getting some really nice loot, but I might, you know, maybe I'll end up entering a boss level with half the health I should have, or with a few less potions because I had to use them to get through a level, or something like that. This game definitely very heavily focuses on that risk-reward aspect, and that's something that I like a lot. That's, that's something I approve of very, very strongly, so the fact that this game focuses so heavily on those things, variety and risk-reward, it makes it an easy recommendation, really. I was looking off-screen like a tard. Alright. There we go. So, as you can see, there are these little optional offshoot areas within each level that you can find if you want to explore long enough to get to them. They can be different things. They can be rooms with chests. They can be uh, mojo mixers, which allow you to combine multiple of these relics into one to save slots. They can even be shrines to other Loa, which can offer you different things. So I can't use this right now because I only have one of these, and of course you need two. And you can't mix usables and stuff, so... I will remember that this is here, however. The amount of stuff you can carry is a very big factor in this game. Alright. So the idea right now is to find Dambala's shrine. Uh feel like I'm probably getting close. You have a map, obviously, you can expand it if you wish. It will mark enemies in your cone of vision, or around you, I guess, in your circle of vision, as well as entrances and chests with yellow dots. But this game uses an interesting line of sight system to where if something is in the shadows, you can't actually see it. Uh, I guess kind of like teleglitch, only less obvious. So if I, say, move around the corner from this zombie here, then uh, they will actually disappear. And not just by taking them off screen, but to the point where they're actually out of my line of sight. I guess now that they're chasing me, it's not going to work, which is unfortunate, but that will happen. Oh, nice. That's a rarity from just destroying bones. All right, so I am heading down, heading down, heading down. Got a nice item here that'll give me 100% crit for a very short period of time, which is useful against tough enemies and bosses and stuff. There are bosses as well as like mini bosses and of course these like elite or champion creatures. And there we go, that's another mechanic I have not ow, shown yet. Every Loa has one of these, this rampage bar, which involves oftentimes they're passive and once it fills they'll give you a gift which usually activates the passive. In the case of this Loa, its passive will uh, make me huge and really, really strong. I'll be very large and stompy and attack with these big heavy strikes that heal me a bunch when I hit things. That's a very useful ability. Shields me and then bursts out with a bunch of damage after the shield wears off. All right, nice. I'll use my potion to grab another one. So, it's uh, very much a roguelite that focuses on combat and the idea of uh, resource management. You're conserving your resources, your items, and equipment, and health, and balancing the time and areas explored with the resources you have to properly explore them and wondering what you might find next. With a little bit more control over that than something like, say, Binding of Isaac, because uh, you know you have control over what area you go to next because of that level selection system, which is pretty interesting. I, I like that a lot. It's unique, certainly. And the fact that there are eight Loa with a passive and two abilities each is 
pretty cool, and there are a couple over a hundred items. So this is an emerald charm. It will decrease some of my stats to give me a big boost in health. I think the extra health it gives me is a bigger boost uh -oh, than the actual debuff that it gives me, so I'm happy with that. Very much so. Those kamikaze dudes are a pain. So the experience you earn will count towards your overall level, and the gold that you earn can be spent in shops and things in your run. can also be spent on upgrading pins and things, as I showed earlier, but will also, as you can tell, persist, which is a bit odd for these types of games. It will persist in between things, uh, in between adventures and things, so. Alistair, he makes your ears please. Another percentage of health on kill as well as some more crit chance. Nice. Alright, this is a vendor, so I can sell things by dropping them into there or buy things, so. Got Gus, a bit of health. Edge, with a modifier to heals, and Bullseye Hood. I believe I'd actually like this. The 10% extra healing from any healing source is a pretty big deal. I don't know if that healing source is also, you know, does any consider things like the 1% lifesteal? I don't know. But uh, it would be cool if it does. Alright, so we're gonna get a speed boost and walk on this way. Trying to find that door. This level is a bit of a sprawl. There are many different tile sets. So you've got levels with more trap focused things, like the dungeon levels and things tend to have. And the game also has a very interesting sense of humor. The Voodoo Loa are personifications of their personality in a very uh, comical way. The humor on uh, yes, the humor on the item descriptions of things as well as uh, the descriptions of the gods themselves or the Loa themselves. It's it's all a very silly, humorous package with the story being told in these sort of uh, mural-like things. So we're gonna go to this area. So basically, this particular quest involves me beating a very difficult boss that I can weaken by killing four of his minions if I want to, who are sort of mini-bosses on their own. And as you could guess, once you die, unless you have specific items to prevent such a thing, you're gone. It's permadeath. Uh-oh, so this is a sort of lava-based level here. It's obviously a, a volcanic zone, as pretty clear in the little symbol there. Oh! Inventory expansion. Alright, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, that's not cool. Heals. Nice. Alright. So this level is going to have different types of enemies, as well as a different looking secret. Ow. And, oh, there's a multi-usable item. That is an item that can be used infinitely, but has a cooldown. So that one gives me a speed boost. Very nice. That is the boost potion. Alright, sweet, sweet. I'm into it. So I have two speed boosts. Those sort of objects now, that's nice. Ow. Definitely taking some damage. So, finding this acolyte uh, might be the end of me if I don't have good equipment. I've got some good passives, but they're each fairly small in effect. I'd like to have something a bit more substantial, maybe. I have found some shrines that allow me to do something to make the game a bit more difficult for me, but get a very, very powerful item. Like, say, remove my mini-map or take away 25% of my max health, but giving me something very big in return, which is a, a neat function. I mean, that makes sense with the particular Loa who offer you that being, you know, their nature as sort of chance takers, gamblers, that sort of thing. And I've just got to say, we don't have enough games that take advantage of this theme. We really don't. Like, this voodoo theme is really interesting to me. It's so cool, and there are almost no games that actually use this style. It's awesome. I love it. It's uh, more than fun, I would say. It's, it's a really neat theme that you don't see a lot, so that helps, but... They've done it really, really well. They've realized the theme through and through. Everything about this game, the music, which is phenomenal, 
by the way, as well as the uh, the music is actually not coming through right now, even though I have it on in the options. I checked earlier because I noticed the same problem. That's that's weird. I I'm not quite sure what that's about, but I think I have an idea. It's it's a bit of a sound card issue on my end, it's not the game's fault. But anyway, uh-oh. Yeah, I summoned him. Uh-oh. I do have an item that will repair my wand. There we go. Which is awesome with the combination with this wand, which is my absolute favorite, but also degrades very, very quickly. So what we're seeing here, more or less, is... A package that's interesting, to say the least. Very well realized voodoo theme, heavily, you know, it's got base a basis in so many uh, kind of half themes, like some kind of southern bayou music and some more esoteric stuff that you would hear on, you know, one of the island nations that this style originates from, really. And it's it's really cool just to see it all in a big package that's it's pretty wonderfully realized. And uh, again, it's a shame that the music isn't playing for me right now, but that's not a problem with the game, that's a problem on my end, so don't blame the game. Uh, <laughs> it's actually really, really good though, so. Something to consider. Oh god. Oh god. Alright. I think we're gonna be able to get through this particular fight. This is my space. There we go. The shield ability is extremely useful. And one acolyte done. Nice. So I could leave the level right now or continue exploring it. Well, not right now. I'd have to find the exit, but you get what I mean. I'm gonna explore it for a bit longer. A mojo with a high crit chance. It's funny, a lot of the mojos I'm finding right now are actually voodoo dolls, which is not all there is. There's a bunch of different kinds, but that's the exit. You can tell by the fact that it's uh, a red door. And there's a couple more things up here I'd like to see before I leave. Oh, jeez. There we go. So, yeah. It's similar to the current offerings in the genre, but made different by the factors that I talked about, as well as its very unique and, once again, extremely well-realized style. This voodoo theme, I just, I cannot stress how much I like it. It's so cool. And I have a lot of uh, respect to the developers for actually sticking so strongly to a style and being able to do it so well. So we're gonna go into this, which is uh, another chest. What's in here? A wand, nice. So there we go, folks. This is Full Mojo Rampage. As far as the, you know, controls and uh, technical specifications goes, it runs very well on most things. It actually is kind of pretty, but it's mostly down to aesthetics rather than extremely high, like, graphical quality. Controls very well with mouse and keyboard. I think there's controller support. I'm not sure about that. I don't... I wouldn't want to use one, but you could, I'm sure. And it runs at a nice, solid 60 FPS all the time. So, that's what I gotta say about that. Boop. Here we go. Also, there are, I think a, there's a daily quest that changes every day, I would assume, as well as some survival modes and other modes of play besides doing the quests. So, you aren't limited to only doing the quests. There are several other modes of play as well, like this whole infinite kind of survival thing, and something that changes every day. I've seen some really cool events as well, like a, um, there was an event that actually put me in an ASCII environment, like, I was an at sign, uh, I was fighting goblins, which were green capital G's, I was shooting asterisks, all of the, the potions were, you know, everything, it was like playing Angband again, it was like a real, true roguelike, what that term actually kind of originated from the ASCII graphics and everything, it, it was great, I loved it, it was a phenomenal level, it was just really fun, and I couldn't stop smirking when I, uh, when I got to it the first time, but yeah. Also, there's a chicken nugget wand, because, I mean, why wouldn't there be, obviously? I mean, you want a chicken nugget wand, don't you? I do. There you go, folks. Full Mojo Rampage. Happy to show it off. This is available on Steam. 
It is currently at the time of recording on sale. I don't know how long that will be the case, however, so don't take my word on that for right now, but even when it's not, very well worth it. And uh, if you're into this genre, that is, this is a good one to get. So thanks for watching, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to continue to try and kill all these acolytes and probably die a horrendous and fair but not uh, well-received death. So thanks, everyone, and uh, see you in the next video.